On this page, we'll look at some different ways that bacteria can be resistant to antibiotics. So the first example we'll look at is antibiotics that affect or inhibit cell wall formation. And I'll give you an example of vancomycin resistance. So vancomycin normally inhibits gram-positive cell wall formation. So it could be a good candidate to use against a gram-positive infection. Interestingly though, although we think of it as a very powerful antibiotic, it actually doesn't work as well as penicillin, assuming the bacteria is not resistant. So, to help you understand what I mean by that, if you had a bacterial infection and the bacteria had not developed resistance to penicillin, then penicillin would be a more effective drug to give than vancomycin. But if the bacteria has developed a resistance to penicillin, then your only option is to go with vancomycin, or one of your only options is to go with vancomycin, which will inhibit gram-positive cell wall formation, but not as well as penicillin would have if there hadn't been that resistance. So we're going to highlight that in green for an example of an antibiotic that we're going to talk about its resistance, and then uh, an example of how a bacteria could become resistant to vancomycin. Oops that we know of is that bacteria just have different enzymes that they're able to use to build their cell wall in a different manner. That's where the phrase, there's more than one way to skin a cat, comes in, because the bacteria have more than one blueprint for how to build a cell wall, and they just choose to build in a way that avoids vancomycin's inhibitory effects. An example of this is VRE, or vancomycin resistant enterococcus. A second example uh, that seems to be becoming a little bit more well known is Versa as opposed to MRSA, and this is vancomycin resistant Staph aureus. Oops, aureus. Now, vancomycin not only doesn't work as well as penicillin would have if the bacteria weren't resistant to it, not only that, it's far more toxic and causes a potentially really scary side effect, or scary looking anyway, side effect called red man syndrome. So a side effect is red man syndrome. And this occurs when the vancomycin is infused too quickly into the IV. We'll just call it vanco for short. And then what happens is that the mast cells in the skin and or in the underlying the mucous membranes 
have a very uh, inflammatory reaction and the, they just break apart and histamine goes everywhere and causes a red flushing throughout the skin. And we, so we call that degranulation because you know that mast cells have granules of histamine in them or at least you might have learned that in 241 or 242. So there are granules of histamine and you see degranulation. And so all of the granules just basically bust out of the mast cell causing massive um, inflammation in the membranes and the person literally turns red, which is where it gets this name, red man syndrome. It's usually from like the waist up. So in other words, if you can use penicillin, use it. Okay, now let's look at another example, tetracyclines and aminoglycosides actually. So we're gonna use blue. Now I'm gonna talk about something that could happen in the cell membrane as a way to accomplish antibiotic resistance. So tetracyclines. And aminoglycosides. Their normal job is to inhibit protein synthesis. Maybe take a black pen and put a line under, oops, right here. So we're now moving on to another mode of antibiotic resistance. So that's, that's the normal way that tetracyclines and aminoglycosides work. We saw that on the previous page. And a way that a resistance might occur here is affecting channels in the cell membrane of the bacteria. So let's say that normally the antibiotic would come in. So um, I'm gonna use purple antibiotic. Usually comes into the cell like this. And either, so option one would be that the cell learns to block its entry or second option is it pumps it out pumps it right back out kind of like a bouncer rejected so the channel So what you would think would be bad for the bacteria, oh, it has a channel that doesn't work anymore, actually end up, ends up blocking the entry of some of these um, antibiotics. Or a pump that the bacteria usually uses to pump something else out can now pump out the antibiotic. some sort of a product. Okay, I'm gonna say that one one more time. So let's say there's a channel in the cell membrane of the bacteria, and normally that antibiotic would come in through this channel. Well, what if the bacteria no longer has a functional channel. It's blocked somehow. Well, the antibiotic can no longer work against that kind of bacteria. The bacteria is now resistant. Or take another example. 
let's say the antibiotic normally comes through this channel and um, there's a pump that the cell has that normally pumps out, let's say a toxin or some other enzyme for metabolism, normally pumps out an enzyme, well, that same pump can also pump out the antibiotic, luckily. So in either of these cases, the antibiotic is no longer going to be able to affect the cell, and the bacteria is now effectively antibiotic resistant. Okay, let's look at a third example. of penicillin. Now penicillin normally works by inhibiting cell wall formation. But bacteria like Staph aureus that are resistant to it may have an enzyme that breaks penicillin. Oops, resistant. The enzyme usually has other jobs in the cell too, but because it becomes famous for its ability, look at that A's, to break down penicillin, penicillin doesn't work, the bacteria is now antibiotic resistant. Okay, then I'm going to give you one more way. So if you think about the three ways so far, one is that they just build their cell wall differently than what the antibiotic would normally do. One is that they um, block a channel that the antibiotic normally comes in through or pump the antibiotic right back out again. A third way is that the antibiotic or the bacteria actually make an enzyme that is able to disable the antibiotic. And then we'll look at one more way. These aren't all of the ways, but I just tried to pick a few that are kind of famous out there for antibiotic resistance. And this is another one with aminoglycosides. And also uh, chloramphenicol. They normally work by inhibiting pro protein synthesis. and a resistance that we see there is um, usually going to be found in gram-negative bacteria. So certain gram-negative bacteria can um, make proteins via another pathway. I mean, they still need ribosomes, but there are a lot of different enzymes that they can be using to complete their protein synthesis. So they might have an alternate metabolic pathway and then sort of like penicillinase, some of these um, aminoglycoside resistant bacteria are able to make enzymes that deactivate the antibiotic.